In chapter 2, we will be looking at measures of middle and spread. Measures of middle and spread help us characterize data. In the first section of the chapter, section 2.1, we will look at measures of middle. We will look at three different measures of middle. We will look at the mode, the median, and the mean. As an example, we'll borrow one from the world of botany. The plant seen here, a Sana alata plant, has leaflets. The length of the leaves on many plants characterize the species of plant we're looking at and help us sort out two different species. In this case, we have leaflets, but if I try to measure the length of the leaflet and write down a single length, it's not going to work well. This leaflet has a length of about 5 centimeters. This one's longer, at about 7 centimeters. This one here, about 9 centimeters. Each of these leaflets has a different length. If I want to write this down in a guide, I could put down all the different lengths. But the number of lengths, well, how many leaves should I put down? Instead, in the world of botany, we usually put down an average length. We could also put down the most frequently occurring length, the most common length. That would be called the mode. And although not usually done, there are circumstances under which in botany we might use the median length. Um, the median being the middle number, the middle length, in a sorted, ordered number of lengths. We'll look at that concept a little bit later. So I'm going to make some measurements here of this leaf and use the data of the leaflets and use this data, the leaflet measurements, to show you how to calculate a mode, median, and mean using Google Sheets and to explain a little bit more about what those numbers mean in the world of statistics. I went ahead and measured a total of 20 leaflets and entered their lengths into a Google Sheets spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and open up that spreadsheet from my Google Sheets app. Here you see the leaflet lengths have been entered in column A. In our previous video, in chapter 1, we learned to enter the sample size n using the count function. I'll go ahead and, by way of review, go ahead and enter the count function. Notice as I start to type the word count, functions also appear that match what I'm typing. So I'll go ahead and tap count as I will finish typing the count function, and it will enter the parentheses for me. Then I can simply type a2, full colon, a21, as that is the range in which the data occurs. And again, I press the green check to enter that function. And the function confirms what I already knew, that I measured 20 leaflets. My sample size is 20. I have 20 length measurements. These length measurements are quantitative, they're numeric values, they're continuous. Although I've measured only to the nearest half a centimeter, with a better measuring instrument, I might be able to measure even more accurately. So this is continuous data, it's quantitative data, it's ratio level data. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in the data set. The mode is a value that occurs most often. In this particular data set, I could probably determine it visually, but there is a function that will tell me the mode. The function is the mode function. So I'll tap and enter text or formula, press my equals, and start typing the word mode, and you'll actually see the, by the time I get to O, the mode function appears in the little bar above my entry box. So I'll just tap on mode, go ahead and tell it A2, to A21, 
the range in which my data occurs, and press the green check, and it will tell me that the most frequently occurring value is 12.5. The mode will work as long as there is a single most frequently occurring value. If no value occurs more than once, uh, then the value will, the mode function will return an error. So if I have the numbers, for example, 1, 2, 2, 4, 5, the mode will correctly report that the mode is 2. If I have the numbers, however, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there is no mode. The mode will produce the result NA. You can see that at the bottom of my screen it says mode, E1 to E5. It's trying to find a mode for those values, but there actually is no mode. But instead of telling me there's no mode, the mode function throws an error, this NA. It tells me the mode cannot produce a result. No values can occur more than once. The answer then is not NA, but no mode. There is no mode. There is one subtlety to the mode function. If a value occurs more than once, uh, and there's a tie with another value that occurs more than once, then the mode function will pick the number in the tie that is closer to the top of the data set. For example, 11355. The mode function, seen running here, calculating the mode from F for the data from F1 to F5, produces the answer 1. But there's a tie. There are two ones and two fives. And in fact, if I reverse the order of the data, 55311, then the mode function will tell me that the mode is 5. In a multi-way tie, the mode function does not produce a reliable answer. There are some advanced functions to deal with that issue, but they go beyond the scope of the course at this point. For now, we'll use the mode function to tell us the mode, uh, and we may have to know something about our data to know whether that mode is reliable or not. The median is another measure of the middle. These measures of middle are measures of central tendency. They tell us something about where things are. The median is the central or middle value in a sorted data set. In order to do it by hand, one has to sort the data in order. Uh, this data is not sorted. This data is simply in the order the measurements were made. But if I sort the data, as I've done here in column I, you can see that 10 values uh, are in the lower half of the data and 10 values in the upper half. The data has no number at the middle because the data has 20 values, an even number. So the median is going to be halfway between the two middle numbers once I've sorted the data set, as I've done here. So the median must be halfway between 10.5 and 11. Halfway between 10.50 and 11 is 10.75, 10.75. So that's where the median actually will be. Now I do not have to sort the data to get the median function to correctly work. The median function will work without the data being sorted. So I'll go ahead and type in the median. It's starting to appear the median function and then open parenthesis. I'll go ahead and type A2 full colon A21 and I can click the checkbox and I see I have an error. So I can go back to my function and I've forgotten to add the end parenthesis. You can always do that. You can go back and edit your function and I tap on the close parenthesis and I'll press check and this time I get the answer that I expected, 10.75. So the median value tells us where the middle of the data is when sorted in order. The average is the third way to calculate the middle and is used most often in statistics. The average is called the mean. Statisticians call the average the mean. The mean is also known as the arithmetic mean and is actually calculated by adding up all of the numbers that you have, adding up your data, and dividing 
by the number of values, dividing by the sample size. To add up the data, we have a function that will add the data. We simply type in equals sum, S-U-M, open parenthesis, A2, full colon, A21. Remember to close the parenthesis, and the sum of the data is 203.2. If I take that sum and divide by the sample size, I can calculate the mean. To do that, I'm going to actually use this grid of columns and letters so that I don't have to type numbers. These are how spreadsheets work, and this is the best way to use them. I see my sum is sitting in A26, so I simply type A26. That tells the spreadsheet to look up the value sitting in A26, which is that 203.2 value. And then I can divide by the sample size. I'll go ahead and just tap on that. That'll actually, tapping on it with my finger, will cause the computer to go ahead and enter A23. That's another way to enter cell addresses into a formula. A23 is called a cell address. If I press check, that will tell me the mean using the sum divided by the sample size. There is a function that will tell you the mean directly, and that function is the average function. In statistics, in spreadsheets, the word average and the word mean have the same meaning. And so I have the average, and I'll go ahead and tell it to go from A2 to A21, and again, I can press the check, and I get the same answer I just got when I took the sum and divided by the sample size. The mean is the sum of the sample data divided by the sample size. However, there is a single function that is essentially a shortcut to the mean, and that is the one most often used. The average function will tell us the arithmetic mean of the data. So that's how we can enter the functions for the mode, the median, and the mean into a Google Sheet spreadsheet from our app on our smartphone. Again, the mode tells us the value that appears most often, the most frequently occurring value. The median tells us the middle value if we can put the data in order. And the mean tells us the arithmetic mean of the data. Now, the mode exists for all levels of data. We can have a most frequently occurring nominal level data, ordinal level, interval, or racial level. But the median and the mean will only exist for numeric data. We can only calculate medians and means for numbers. And so only the interval level will have a median. The mean at the interval level may or may not, forgive the pun, have any meaning. That's because, remember, fractional values do not necessarily have any value and usually do not exist at the interval level. And then at the racial level, we have fractions and ratios have meaning. They're valid values. 10.16 centimeters is a perfectly fine measurement. And so 10.16 centimeters is the mean. At the racial level, we have a valid mean, median, and mode. For our data, we have a mode of 12.5, a median of 10.75, and a mean of 10.16. With that, I'll let uh, you turn to any for further information to the textbook, which will be linked in the description below.